Hi, I'm Matt Jackson, and this is Next Level Carpentry. Viewers of this channel have seen some of the steps used in making these custom box newel post parts. But the most outstanding newel post in the world is kind of useless if the post wobbles. So I decided to do an installation sequence to show viewers how a project like this comes together. You'll see how post design, a couple of wooden blocks, and a piece of ready rod can be used to get a rock rigid remodeled railing. So if you're curious, stick with me to see how it's done. A rock rigid remodeled railing using ready rod? Can you spell that without any R's? Of course, T-H-A-T. New newel posts are often installed by extending part of the post down into floor framing or a bottom step and screwing it or bolting it into place from underneath. A railing upgrade for a remodel project can be a real challenge when there's no room for an extended post and no access even if there is. And I'll mention here that this process works so well that I use it in new construction where access and anchoring aren't a problem so posts don't need to be installed before sheetrock. Various newel post anchor kits are available but they're generally pretty hinky if you ask me. The engineering degree I earned at MIT is enough to tell me that the leverage from a 36 inch to 42 inch tall newel post that's four inches or so square at the bottom is much too great for little angle brackets and screws to provide enough strength to work with that kind of leverage. This method trumps fastening a threaded metal plate to the floor with screws to accept the threaded rod too, in my humble opinion. When it came time to design and plan this new glass railing system, I knew I'd need to pull a rabbit out of my hat to get acceptable results. My hat was empty, but Jared Alstrom, an excellent carpenter and good friend, let me one of his by telling me about this ready rod method. I was already planning on using hollow box newels, so only a little adjustment to provide the shoulder to support a large nut and washer was necessary. The key to making this whole process work is having six to eight inches of solid wood directly under the center of the post to drive the 5 8 inch threaded rod into. The beauty of the method is that no access from below is required, although it can be used if available. I had three newels to anchor, and the first one turned out to be the most straightforward. I laid out the newel post and marked its exact center. After determining I was above a double 2x10 floor joist below and wouldn't compromise its structural integrity, I made a drilling guide block for a half inch bit from a scrap of 4x4 and drilled an 8 inch deep hole into the joist. Another beautiful thing about all this is that the pilot hole should be close to plumb, but it doesn't have to be drill pressed perfect. After drilling, clean all the chips out of the pilot hole so they don't clog up in the bottom. And because I already installed the railing and just disassembled it for this video, I didn't get any chips when I drilled that half inch hole, and it went pretty fast. Using the pilot hole depth, plus height from the subfloor to the shoulder in the post, I cut a piece of 5 8 inch National Course Thread Ready Rod to length using this remarkable Milwaukee dry cut saw. Since the tip of the rod needs to cut its own threads in the pilot hole, here's a tip to give it a special tip. First, I grind a slight blunt paper point on it so it fits into the pilot hole. That baby's getting warm. I make sure to grind the taper up a ways so that it's actually removing the first few threads. Next, I switch to an eighth inch cutting wheel. Using the eighth inch cutoff wheel in the angle grinder, I make a few slots into this tapered point to help cut the threads as the rod's driven into the wood. And now the point on the ready rod matches the tip on this self-tapping machine screw. And finally, a quick touch on a wire wheel over the ground edges on this point make it a little smoother for better thread cutting. And now while the tip is still warm from the grinding in the wire brush, I'll give it a coat of this snap stick, snap and zipper lube to make driving it into the wood easier still. A pair of jam nuts on the top end of the rod act as a bolt head and easily handle the torque necessary to drive it home. With the rod prep and the hole drilled, everything else in place, I use the double jam nut on top of the rod for my socket and get to work driving the ready rod down into the pilot hole. And because I already installed this railing and I'm just running this rod back down through the hole, it spins a lot easier this time. But on the initial go round, I used a hefty cheater bar on the ratchet to make the process easy. A piece of masking tape on the ready rod is my gauge for how deep to screw the rod into the floor. Once the ready rod is screwed to its proper depth, I remove the jam nuts so that the centering block and the squash block can be slipped down over the rod. 
And yes, I screwed up the video sequence. I should have shown the part where I locate and attach the centering block on the subfloor before screwing this bottom nut onto the threaded rod. With that sequence, the block is already in place and the rod is threaded down through the hole with this jam nut at the bottom. The way I did it, I get to take this nut all the way off the rod just to place the centering block. And I chose to do that instead of unscrewing the all thread from that hole again. So I'll ask for a carpenter's mulligan as I go through these extra steps to do it right the second time. I made a centering block from double up three quarter inch plywood that fits snugly into the bottom of the newel post and drill the three quarter inch hole through the exact center. When I'm doing this in the right sequence, I locate the block exactly square with the world and in the exact post location and screw it down before driving the threaded rod into the hole. Because it's a centering block, just a couple screws are all that's required to keep this securely in place. And because I'm doing this kind of bass backwards, I now place the washer and run the nut all the way back down. And I'm not certain that this extra jam nut is necessary at the bottom, but as easy as it is to install it, I thought, what the heck, it's not gonna hurt, it can only help. On this particular newel post, the subfloor is just slightly out of level so that when I torque the newel post down, it's leaning a bit to one side. To remedy that, I'm using these two thin plastic shims and these plastic strips are strapping material from packaging on pallets. I keep a selection of different thicknesses on hand for this sort of thing. Plastic is durable and very dense, making for excellent shims. So I've got a thin one and a thick one that I've taped together and I'm placing them under this side of the newel post. And remember, a little shim goes a long way with the geometry involved in the post's base and height. If you don't believe me, just ask a professor. Now, if I've done all my homework correctly, the stars are lined up and I hold my mouth right. I just slip the post down over the rod and block, drop on a squash block, which is a duplicate of the centering block in this post design, and the washer and crank down on the nut. Once the bolt snug down, the post just vibrates from the tension in the rod, but that's pretty much flexing the post itself and not in the anchor system. And it's not getting looser with the movement. And I think that qualifies for rock rigid on a freestanding post like this, especially when compared to other post anchoring systems like small brackets or plates screwed to the floor. The other two posts in this installation have structural advantages that this post doesn't. This post at the base of the stairs has a small knee wall to help give it sideways support and of course the post at the top of the landing has railings coming in at angles so those features alone add extra strength so i felt that this freestanding post was a better demonstration of the strength that's gained by this ready rod anchor system if i push hard enough on this post it'll flex but there's no notable movement leaning on the post in this direction and once the top handrail is installed the only force that'll ever influence it is side to side and there's plenty of strength here for that. Then I just drop the top section and dome cap on the post to complete the installation. I just love it when a plan comes together and with posts this rigid I'll sleep soundly not worrying about glass panels breaking from wobbly newels. I'm doing a written article about this same installation method for Pro Remodeler magazine and in that magazine there'll be some description and extra information that describes how I set the other two newel posts, the one at the bottom of the stairs and the one at the top of the stairs on the landing because those installations were a little less straightforward than the bottom one although the principle itself is the same. And when that article gets published, I'll include a link to it in the description below this video for anybody that's interested in alternate applications for this installation method. For full disclosure here, I wanna say that I wrote the script for this installation before I shot the video of the process. And in hindsight, realized that I should have said really rigid instead of rock rigid. Because as you saw, the posts can flex and they vibrate even if they don't wobble. They are wooden newel posts after all, and not steel pipes filled with concrete, set in pavement for traffic bollards. And those are rock rigid. So using that term here is a bit misleading and I apologize. I am convinced though that this is as solid of an installation as can be achieved for this post design and the installation conditions that I'm working with. And that's pretty similar to other residential installations. A post with a smaller footprint would mean more stress on the plywood and the wood underneath and would tend to flex more than these posts did. A big chunky newel with an eight or 10 inch base, that would be a lot closer to rock rigid 
than the smaller footprint size ones like this. At the end of this video, I'll include links to other videos showing how I made various pieces parts of these newel posts, plus a couple of related videos that show how I made these demanding sanding blocks for making the double domed newel post caps, as well as the Merrill adjustable corner clamps that I used for gluing up the waist section and the cove sections. If you follow the Pinterest link on the home page of the Next Level Carpentry channel, you'll see other pictures of this whole custom railing process, along with photos from other videos and Next Level Carpentry projects that have been featured on this channel. So with all that, I hope that you can give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Next Level Carpentry if you haven't already. And I always appreciate viewer comments following these videos where it's fun to just exchange work and life history with people from all over the world. In some ways, that's the heart of what this channel is all about. Well, I guess that is T-H-A-T. So, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>